Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to cover the setup for the UI. Let's get started. Okay, so here I have an empty scene, it only has a basic 2D camera. Now in order to keep our hierarchy clean, let's start by making a game object and name it Game Handler. We're going to put this on 000 and drag the main camera onto it. This is just so our scene hierarchy is organized. Inside it, let's make another game object and name it the UI. You can leave it on any position, but personally, I like to put it to the side. So let's put it on a thousand and a thousand on the Z. This way you can view it in the scene view next to the game view so it doesn't block the origin of our actual game scene. So this game object in here will be the container for our UI. Let's go right click and create a UI canvas. As you can see, when you create the canvas, the event system gets automatically created. Inside our canvas, let's create a UI image just so we can see something in our game view. So as you can see, this square is a UI image being displayed in our UI. Now in here, in the canvas, we have several different render modes. The screen space overlay mode displays a rectangle on our scene view and any UI elements you place inside it will be visible. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this one since it keeps everything very busy. The other main render mode is screen space camera, which allows you to assign a camera that will then render your UI. This is the mode that we're going to use since using a camera allows us to do a lot of really cool things like for example displaying the UI with perspective and applying cool shaders. So let's create the camera that will display our UI. Let's create a new game object, name it UI camera. Let's add the camera component, make it orthographic so it displays in 2D, set the size to 100, and there you go. We now have in here a basic 2D camera that we're going to use to display our UI. Let's set the clear flags to depth only so it only clears the depth after the main camera has rendered. So now that we have our UI camera, let's go into our canvas and set it to use this camera. There you go, as you can see, we now can place our UI in here rather than having an arbitrary square in the middle of our scene. This way it helps to make things much more clear when you're going in scene view. You can see this is the origin of the game scene and this is where the UI is placed. All right, so now let's take care of the scaling. There are several different scale modes. Constant pixel size maintains the pixel size of your UI regardless of screen size. Scale with screen size resize the UI to fit the screen and constant physical size maintains the same size regardless of screen or resolution. The one that I find best to use is scale with screen size, which resize the UI elements to fit the screen and resolution. The reference resolution in here is the main resolution for your UI. If the current resolution is smaller, it will be scaled down. If it's bigger, it will be scaled up. Since I make mainly desktop games, I like to set this to 720p, so 1280 by 720. And for the match mode, let's fully match with the height. This means that elements in our UI will only be resized if the height of our resolution changes. So if I change the aspect ratio in here from 16 by 9 to 5 by 4, you can see the image does not get scaled. If I change the vertical size, you can see that it does get scaled. So with the UI set up like this, you can place everything vertically and only have to worry about horizontal movement. For the reference pixels per unit, let's just leave it at 100. So our UI is now correctly set up. Inside the canvas is where you put your UI objects. For example, in my games, I usually have a version in the corner. So let's make a game object inside the canvas. Let's name it window version. On the rec transform, let's expand to occupy our entire canvas. So set it to expand and everything on zero. So as you can see in the corners, it's occupying the entire UI window. So regardless of the aspect ratio, this one always occupies the entire screen. And inside, let's make a UI text object. Let's make it in white and give it a text of V1.00. Let's make it in overflow, set the size to zero, and we're going to anchor it to the lower left corner. And for the position, let's put it on five and five. So just like that, you can see the text object on the lower left side. I can drag the game window to modify the vertical resolution and as you can see the version is always there on the corner. It gets scaled up or down but it never moves that position. And since I anchored it to the left side, if I change the horizontal size it also stays within that corner. So there you have it. We started with an empty scene and set it up to display our UI. 
We set it to display using a camera which we can later use to make some cool shader effects. We also set up the scaling to automatically resize the UI depending on the resolution, ensuring that our UI is versatile and works with any resolution. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.